Biryani has to be one of the most popular dishes throughout the world today, and I think we can all agree on that. There's something about an aromatic spicy rice dish packed full of flavour that you simply cannot turn down. There are so many countries around the world which have their different variations, however today I'm basing mine off one of the more popular ones, found in Hyderabad, a city found in South India. I really think you guys will enjoy this recipe, so stick along with me, give it a go, send it on social media, and I hope you enjoy the video. Let's do some cooking. So to begin, we have got some chicken thighs and chicken drumsticks. Don't use chicken breast, that's dry. For the marinade, we're gonna need some mint, ginger, garlic, coriander, lemon juice, and green chilies. These are spicy, but they're really, really good. And of course, can't forget the yogurt. So we want to be very generous here with the herbs. Grab yourself a nice big bunch of the coriander and roughly chop it ready to use in the marinade, as well as later on when building the biryani. So just make sure you have enough. Grab yourself a nice ripe lemon, roll it on the surface with the palm of your hand. This actually makes the lemon extra juicy, so when you come to squeeze it later on, you'll be able to get more of the juices out of the lemon itself. And then finally chop the chilies. A really good tip for peeling a knob of ginger is to use a spoon like this, peeling along the skin, and it takes off really quickly and really easily. To the drumsticks, we will add the prepared yogurt, green chilies, coriander, lemon juice, and then the garlic cloves and ginger, all minced. So then we want to add in all of the beautiful spices. So we have some curry powder, garam masala, cinnamon sticks, green cardamom, black cardamom, and salt. Just take a look at all of those beautiful colors. You just know it's gonna taste good. Now we've mixed the chicken with all the spices and yogurt and all of the fresh herbs, we want to marinate this overnight or at least four hours in the fridge. Trust me, this is a really important part to ensure flavorful, juicy chicken. So now the chicken's marinating, we want to chop up some onions. We're gonna fry them so they're nice and crispy. And we're gonna add this into the biryani later on. Once you have the onion ready and chopped, it's time to fry. So fill up a heavy base pan with some oil, but the key here is to make sure it's cold. Add the onions to the cold oil and turn up the heat. The slow coming of temperature will make sure that the onions don't burn and stay a nice, crisp, golden brown. Let's be honest, what's not to love about a crispy onion? Once cooked, sprinkle with salt and there you have a delicious crisp onion, perfect for the biryani and as a topping later on. Now for the rice, we're gonna be using a long grain basmati rice, as you can see here. This is basically perfect for the biryani. You don't want to use short grain because that's a little bit too starchy. We want the rice to be quite dry. Um, so when we layer it up, you get a nice flaky rice with the meat. We're gonna rinse the rice, then boil it in some water with some aromatics. Now it'll be perfect. And soak the rice for 30 minutes. Then once it's soaked for 30 minutes, strain it and then we'll get ready to cook it in the boiling water. For those of you who don't know, ghee is simply clarified butter. For the spices, we've got some caraway seeds, green cardamom, bay leaves and cinnamon. And then we're going to add in some mint as well to give it a little extra freshness. Tip the spices into the pan. If you don't have ghee to fry the aromatics, then don't worry. However, if you do, then this is ideal. The slight nuttiness and richness adds such a beautiful depth of flavour to the rice. In with the rice, but be careful because hot oil and water tend to spit a little bit. There's not much water here because you should have strained it, but be careful. Give it a little stir to stop the rice from clumping together and add in the water. A little tip here, cover the rice with enough water so it hits the knuckle on your finger. Add the mint into the pan, bash it in your hands a few times to help those leaves start to release the oils. We want to bring it to the bowl, then cook for three minutes until it's al dente. This is really important because we're going to cook it again later on when we actually build the biryani all in the big pot. Remove the rice from the heat and leave to cool before using in the biryani later on. Into a large pan, we're going to go in with three tablespoons of ghee. Bring that up to a high heat and then add in the chicken and fry for a few minutes. So then we want to warm up some milk, add a bit of saffron in, then we have a beautiful saffron milk to drizzle over the biryani at the end and it'll give it a really nice golden color. Now the milk is warm, I'm gonna add in the saffron, give it a mix and let it sit for about 10 minutes before we pour it over the top of the rice. 
We now have all of the ingredients ready to build the biryani. We've got the saffron milk nicely infused. We've got the coriander and mint nicely finely chopped. Roughly chopped, doesn't make a difference, it won't matter. And we've got the crispy onions and then the rice that we cooked earlier. We're gonna add some of the crispy onions and herbs on top and then we're gonna add the rice, some more crispy onions and herbs and we're gonna drizzle over the amazing saffron milk to make it look beautiful. Now, be generous here. Don't hold back on the amount of herbs and onions you use. This is all flavor, so really add as much as you want. And finally, drizzle over the saffron milk, which will give it an amazing bright orangey yellow color. Now the biryani's built, we want to cover this very tightly, cook it on a medium heat for five minutes, and then reduce the heat to low and cook it for 30 to 40 minutes until the chicken is really juicy and tender, but cooked through. This is my take on an Indian inspired biryani. So now the biryani is cooked, we're going to mix it all together and plate it up, top it with a bit of raita, some more coriander and mint, and you're good to go. And there you have it, a really delicious recipe for my take on an Indian Hyderabadi biryani. This is so delicious, you've got all the spices, you've got all the fresh herbs, topped with crispy onions and coriander and mint, can't get much better than that. Let's tuck in and see how it is. And there you have my take on a Hyderabadi biryani. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like. It really helps me with my videos getting seen to as many people as possible. Leave me any feedback in the comments below and I'll be sure to check it out. I hope you guys enjoy making this dish and until next time, let's do some cooking.